Welcome to Falcon's Ledge, I'm Ostringer, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up your Axis configuration in Star Citizen. I'm going to follow this video up with a more conceptual video that will focus on the methodology of creating button setups by looking at the existing fighter aircraft, HOTAS configurations, and what they can teach us about how to set ours up. But for now, let's just talk about Star Citizen and how we're going to set up your Axis configuration. So I'll show you quickly how to set up your controls for the three main control types that are not mouse and keyboard. First, we'll want to navigate to the Options menu. There are two main areas that you'll need to configure your controls, and at first they may not seem very intuitive. The first place you should go is the Key Bindings page. Here you can see all the keyboard bindings, and if you like to use profiles with your joysticks, this is the screen where you'll be able to see the majority of the functions, and you'll be able to use your joystick manufacturer's keyboard profile in order to set up your buttons for your sticks. I prefer to set my buttons in-game, and while this might not be the absolute most effective way of doing things, I like it better. So, to set up our joystick button and axis bindings, we'll go to the Advanced Control Customization button. On the lower right hand corner, select the button that says keyboard slash mouse twice until it says joystick slash HOTAS. This is where we'll change the settings for your joysticks. The most important piece we're going to change in this video is going to be the movement axis. To do this, we'll want to expand the flight movement section. So first we're going to go over the settings for HOTAS. We will set the axis for pitch first. Double click the line for pitch and it will ask you to move the input you want associated with pitch. Move your joystick forward and back. It will pick up the axis and display it here. Here is something to note for future steps. If it just says Y axis, this means that the joystick you just moved is input number one. If it says Y axis input two input two, yes it's repeated, then this stick is going to be input two in the later part of this guide. Next, we're going to set the axis for yaw. Some people who just fly space sims like to use the x-axis for this movement. I personally can't stand that setup. It drives me insane, because I come from flight sims. If you play both space and flight sims, or if you want to eventually fly flight sims, I would recommend using either pedals or twist axis for yaw. If you want to be one of those x-axis for yaw guys, well, you're weird. But that's your right, I guess. Additionally, since we just talked about yaw and the alternative settings for this, the same applies to roll. My preferred settings for roll is the X axis on my right stick. So now we've got all of the main flight axes on our right hand stick. At some point here, we'll address the center stick thing. But in short, there's a reason all of the new US aircraft have side sticks. Ergonomically, it's just superior. If you like using center stick, go for it. But just try using side stick sometime. Your joints will thank you. I also plan to talk about the positioning of your sticks in that same video, but in short, your arm should be completely relaxed when on the stick. Don't mount it too high. This is going to cause fatigue. In Hollywood, and even in Star Citizen, they like to mount their sticks really high up so that they're in your view. It's just a better framing for the stick when it comes to getting a shot or having it in your view so you can see it moving in a game. It's not really good for ergonomics. Alright, so let's move on to the left-hand side. There's going to be two main methods of using HOTAS and Star Citizen. If you have a center detent on your throttle, you'll likely use the forward reverse setup, and if you don't, you'll likely use just a forward setup with a reverse switch. If we scroll down, we will find the throttle forward back setting. This is the setting that you'll want to use if you have a center detent on your throttle. Move your hand forward of the detent, and you will thrust forward. Move it behind the detent, and you'll go backwards. You need to adjust the dead zone in the center, which we'll do later. If you're using a throttle that has no center detent, then the most logical setup for you is the throttle forward setup. We will bind the throttle access to the throttle forward selection. This will make it so when you push the throttle forward, you'll go forward. We do want to give ourselves the option of going backwards there. The strafe forward back invert option changes your forward throttle to a reverse throttle. Assign this to a button on your throttle, and you can switch from forward thrust to reverse thrust in the click of a button. Now to set up the thrusters. For most throttles, you will do this one of two ways, either a hat switch or an analog stick. 
If you have an analog stick, you'll assign the x-axis to the strafe right left and the y-axis to the strafe up down. If you're using a hat switch, you'll set each of the movement directions to a single button on the hat. Strafe up, down, left, and right. You will also need to set up your speed limiter. My preference is the absolute limiter. This is faster and easier to use than a relative. The relative speed limiters would be set on an encoder or a mouse wheel or something like that. And so as you roll it up, the limiter goes up. And as you roll it down, the limiter goes down. But there's no fixed bottom and top on the axis since it's just an encoder. For my case, I prefer a long throw axis like the one on my Orion throttle. Now let's talk about HOSAS. For HOSAS, the right stick is set up in the same way, but the left stick, now that's a little different. The y-axis of the left stick will be our forward and back throttle setting. The x-axis will be our strafe left and right. And our twist axis will be our thrust up and down. Once I move my left stick to being angled, this will be a little bit more intuitive for an up and down. I'm used to it right now and it works fine as it is, so if yours is that way I wouldn't worry about it, but the angle grip is going to be really nice. When using dual stick, I use the cruise control judiciously to avoid fatigue. That way you're not always holding forward on that thrust stick. So finally, I'll talk shortly about the setup that I use because I don't necessarily fit into HOTAS or HOSAS because I use HOSAS with a throttle. The way that I use it is I use the standard dual stick setup, but I also use the throttle. I've moved my absolute speed limiter to my throttle axis, and I've added up, down, left, and right thrusters to one of the hat switches on the throttle as well. When I'm cruising, I'll set my cruise control, and I'll move my hand to the throttle, where it acts just like any other throttle because the absolute speed limiter is going to limit your speed. Moving it forward increases the absolute speed limiter. Moving it back is going to reduce it all the way down to zero if I want. And then just quickly I can disable cruise control and go right back to the dual stick. It's kind of a best of both worlds scenario. So once we've got all the axes and thrusters set up, we should load the game, get into our ship, and see what other alterations we'll be needing to make. Now that we've arrived, and started our ship up, let's use the thrusters to take off. If you're using a hat switch, it's pretty likely that this worked fine for you. But if you're using an analog stick for thrusters or dual stick, pulling up may not have lifted you off the pad. Try pushing the other direction. Once you're off the pad, check all your axes. See if there's any others that are backwards and note that. Chances are you've got at least one of those axes that are not behaving as expected. All right, so we'll go back to the options menu and let's go to controls. Hopefully you've noted which axes were backwards. In the lower right hand side, you'll select the button that says mouse and we'll want to go all the way until it goes to the stick with the axis that's backwards. We'll select inversion settings, expand flight and expand flight movement. Find the axis that's backwards listed there, and the example that I'll use here would be my throttle axis. I reversed it, and now it works properly. You'll want to rinse and repeat these steps for any of the other axes that are not working properly for you. Lower on that same screen where you change your inversion settings is the, is the dead zone settings. This is where, if, if you were using a center detent throttle, this is where you would want to increase that dead zone to make it so when you're sitting on the center detent, you're not going to be inching forward or inching backwards. This can also work on any axis that happens to be drifting. In addition, there's a section called saturation. This is your joystick curves. If your joystick feels too sensitive in the middle where it moves too much for being so close to the center, if you increase the saturation, it's going to create a curve for the stick, and that can help when things are a little bit too jumpy, or if you want it to be a little bit more dead in the center, which helps with uh, fine movements. I hope that this video helped you and you were able to get all of your axes working properly in Star Citizen. I'll continue this series with introducing additional concepts going forward. 
Remember that I'm giving away an $80 Star Citizen game package or DCS module when my channel hits 1,000 subscribers, which is only a few subscribers away, I'll have you know. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed and comment on my videos from the beginning of 2021 to when this drawing will take place. A random video will be selected and a random comment from that video will win. On a side note for the giveaway, your subscriptions have to be public, otherwise I can't verify if you're subscribed. I've got a bunch of videos I'm working on right now, including a Hotas vs. Hosas video, which has been in production for a long time, but I wanted to wait until I got my Orion Throttle, and a full review for that Winwing Orion Throttle. Please subscribe and comment below, it really does help my channel out. Thank you, and have a great day.